say crawl and then do before you ball. Just Being Buffy's YouTube channel where we discuss all things crawl before you ball, all things personal finance, all things tax and we get into a little pop culture and whenever I see a former Bravo Liberty uh, with some monthly problems, you know Auntie Buffy gonna talk about it. So let's get into this. I am so not happy with the news that I saw reported by All About the Team with All About the Team Excuse me, y'all. I told y'all, Auntie is like going through this perimenopause. You get you get nauseous. Um, this news that all about the tea reported about Kim Zosiak Beerman child. Now, I never really liked Kim. Let's just keep it a bean, because I read the innuendo with the whole um sweetie and all that mess if you watch real housewives of atlanta back in the day and i didn't like the way she had shun melson who at the time was my client running around atlanta buying her all these darn um luxury items and clothes and just stupid purchases of um labels and you know I just didn't like, I didn't like how she did candy with, with the, with the song, don't be tardy and not paying her and not giving her her due. But this really grinds my gears with these Bravo liberties who become nouveau riche, meaning new money. And then they have a perfectly good situation and then they squander it acting crazy. So according to, um, all about the tea, Kim Zosiak, $2.6 million lavish mansion mansion facing foreclosure. Um, so the house is worth $2.6 million. Bravo canceled beer men's reality series. Don't be tardy. Now, how long was don't be tardy on? I think it was on for seven or eight seasons, like seven or eight seasons of a reality show that you're a co-creator and an executive producer of not to mention all the time you were on real housewives of Atlanta. This math ain't math. And it, 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 it doesn't make sense to me. According to Fulton County Records, filing on October 6, 2022 by Landmark Community Bank, they began foreclosure proceedings on Zosiak Beerman's 7,186 square foot uh, Alpharetta, Georgia mansion. So she and Croy failed to pay back a $300,000 loan that was borrowed to complete renovations on their lavish dream home, according to All About the Tea. The couple purchased the house in 2012 for $880,000, y'all. For eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars in two thousand twelve, you should almost be finished paying for the, paying the house off by now. Like you should, you should, you should almost be finished paying that house off, and you about to lose it because you didn't pay a little three hundred thousand dollar loan. I, I just it it don't make it's not it really annoys me. They got like little kids, like I you know they may be teenagers now, them little boys, but she got fifty eleven children. Like this ain't cute. Eight seasons of Don't Be Tardy. Where that money at? And also, what happened to Cashmere? Did she have some skincare, lotion, some sort of type of, you know, get rich quick Bravo scheme? I want to be like Bethany Frankel, mess, business. I'm a businesswoman. I'm a boss that, you know, all them girls do after two, three seasons on Real on Housewives show. I thought she was in some, like telling everybody she made $25 million, which I didn't believe, but that she made $25 million from cashmere. Where was cashmere money at? Where's Miss Cashmere's money? The lies, the lies, my best candy uh, impression. Like I, I, th for me, it's upsetting because these new Bravo Riche, meaning new money folk need to learn to hire business managers who can help them with their finances. Like you can say whatever you want about them Kardashians. 
those girls all have business managers and excellent business managers at that. When you see them trying to buy something, a new car, a new house, whatever, they have to go through their business manager and probably Chris as well, they mama, to get approval to do so. And what happens is I was a business manager for years for professional athletes, politicians, wealthy people, small business owners who like the thing is, I think people think when when you start making a lot of money, all of a sudden you become a maverick with finances and it doesn't work that way. Like bad money habits carry over. They carry over. If you if, if you ain't good with money, when you when you rob and Peter to pay Paul, when you should be crawling. Then how the heck you think you'll be good with money when somebody gives you lump sums of money? It's just it's not gonna it's not gonna happen. It's just it doesn't work that way. I think right now sixty two percent or sixty four percent of Americans are saying they're living from paycheck to paycheck, and over half of those people are people that make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's that's really telling. That's really upsetting, and that's a clear indication that we've got a major financial crisis in this world in america um you know yes we have inflation right now yes we've got the recession and we've got all this stuff but you make it six figures and you live in paycheck to paycheck some stuff got to change baby some stuff is gonna have to change and you may not be happy with the changes that you're gonna have to make now, Kim Nim got this big old 8,000 square foot, 71, 26, whatever it is, mansion. Now, I'm not going to hate on her for buying this house because back in 2012, she had got it, I think, out of foreclosure. So she got a deal on it. And so then I get why she wanted to renovate it because in foreclosure, people usually tear up the house because they may have when they leave. So it probably did need some renovations. But the fact that she may lose this house that has over $1.5 million in equity in it sickens me. And it really is probably way more than that because I, if they did have a loan on that original 880,000 and she's been paying it, they've been paying it. It's been since 2012. That should have, that must have almost been paid for. I'm hoping that it's not a situation where Kim and Croy bought that house cash for the 880,000 because that would be a problem. Never, ever do that. Y'all auntie Buffett was, be very angry with y'all. Even Jay Z and Beyonce got a loan on a compound. You know, they their house they 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 bought their compounds eighty million dollars. They took a loan out for fifty million, which was genius because they've got smart business managers. Because you can take that thirty million that you were going to add to that fifty, um, and you could put that money in the markets, and it can make you enough money in the markets to pay the mortgage on the fifty million dollar house. So your money is working for you, not the other way around. It's not smart to sink a whole bunch of money in a house. Yes, houses are appreciating assets and all that, and that's great. But really, um, you can make more money putting your money in the markets. So I'm always about leveraging cheap debt. So if you get a low interest rate, do it every time. So if they bought the house in cash in 2012, and then they just got a loan for 300000 against it to renovate the property, then it's been since 2012 and they ain't paid that loan off. Like I, 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 I am, I'm, 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 I want to say that they got an $880,000 loan and then got a $300,000 loan. And in 2012 interest rates were not so bueno. So, you know, maybe that's the problem. I mean, she had eight years of don't be tardy. So then I guess the financial problems started having once the show was canceled, what in 2020, and so for the past couple of years, things have been bad. Um, but it's that's devolved into chaos pretty fast. I would hope there was some savings, some investment, some something. Croy also had money from his career, I would hope. He seems like a country fed country boy who just fell in love with, you know, one of them gals my mama called them, 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 them gals. Um hopefully he I I this would be sad to me. But, you know, maybe somebody like Kenya Moore, who seems to be savvy in real estate, will buy it out of foreclosure and fix it up and flip it like she did her house. Because uh, apparently Kim bought her home out of foreclosure, pay cash for it and um, owns it outright. I don't like the paying cash for stuff, but maybe 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 Kenya knew she wasn't good with money. And so she was like, let me just go on and get this and pay for it and be done with it. Um. And I hope Kenya put that house in a trust.
That's all I'm gonna say for her daughter. But yeah, this this is this is upsetting to me. I, I mm, it's not cute. Um, somebody gonna come up, and it's like in some gated community with some golf course and and all that jazz. And you know, I just remember allegedly Kim spending thousands of dollars a day on lottery tickets and plastic surgery and tomfoolery. And sometimes we think that these people are doing this for the cameras, but really they're doing it in real life too. For the gram, for for the people around them, they want people to keep up with the, the Zosiac Beermans. And you don't want to do that. That's You don't want to be tardy for no mortgage payments. That's not cute. It's not. And like for me, when I report on this stuff, it's not to like make the person feel bad or talk ish about the person. It's so that we can all learn a lesson from this. Like all that glitters ain't gold. You know what I mean? And usually all the stuff that gets us in trouble, them damn labels. Them, I, I'm just, I'm keeping it being. Like if you're going to invest in real estate and be smart, I'm not going to begrudge anybody. Like I, I've seen down there to the medicine, the clips where everybody's on quad, who I have no relationship with. All I say about quad is I didn't really have any problems with quad when I was on the show, other than the fact that after the season and she started doing press, she said she didn't know me. I didn't appreciate that when I was kind and supportive of her throughout the season. But uh, now everybody's telling me that's normal for her. Um, but, you know, the fact that um, I'm a lavalier showing. You know, Auntie be trying to be professional with her show. But the fact that apparently all the girls down to the medicine and Simone definitely with her jealous ass talking smack because Quad has a $2 million house and they're all like, how can she afford that? First of all, I don't understand why folk are always so pressed about how somebody else spends their money if you're not in this space. Like, this is what I do for a living and have done for 20 years, 22 plus years. But like, you are OBGYN. Worry about children uh, delivering babies. Simone with yourself um and I mean she's you know she's trying to act like it's out of care and concern but Simone is one of them girls that's jealous 100% I don't think Toya gives two flips about it um she just wanted quad to fall back off her but like this situation where they're all kind of ganging up on quad and it's like well she had to be sleeping with a married man to get this house completely furnished she could have bought the house furnished y'all that happens. I sold my last home. Our last home, the people came in. They wanted to buy all our furniture. They even wanted to buy David's car. That does happen. She could have just bought all the furniture and then renovated and fixed whatever. And, and, and quite honestly, it would have been smart to do so because you could probably get all that wrapped in the same loan, buy the house as is with everything especially given supply chain problems right now. And the fact that if you get anything made custom, it's going to take two years for you to get it. And she didn't want to look like Toy and Eugene or any of the rest of these people when they first got in their homes and they waited on that restoration hardware or wherever they ordered this furniture from to get delivered. And you look like you ain't got no furniture. There are many ways that she could have done this. Now, again, I'm not defending Quad. I don't have a relationship with her. But I think she makes some salient points in that she ain't got no children. Like I heard she had adopted some child. I don't know what happened with that story. But I reckon she got back on the show, so she didn't need to do that no more. But uh, and then I heard that she, you know, she has her adorable nephew living with her now, which is great in her mother, and that's fantastic. And if she wants that kind of life herself, good. Kudos. I want anybody, especially somebody that looks like me, to celebrate living life to the fullest. And so she makes some valid points in that up until now, I ain't had nobody to take care of but me. And so when you have disposable income, you ain't paying for college. You're not paying for private school. You could do that. She can. And let's not forget, uh, she bought at a time when interest rates were like 2%. So where somebody like Simone has been in her house 22 during years, probably with an 8% mortgage rate because she got the mortgage eight years, 18 million years ago back in the 1800s. Um, uh, no, nah, I know Simone's paid her house off in the past two years. Congrats to you, both houses. But um, it's different if you could take advantage of these really low interest rates before now, which I think quad bought her house during the time when it had the really low interest rates. So she probably got a manageable rate. And listen, you can't qualify for no mortgage if not in this day and time, if it the funds ain't there. This just, I'm going to keep it real with you. They do a damn near FBI background check on these people now. And you talk about renting a place in rent shock 
they do the same when an underwriter is going. And remember, I know I owned a mortgage company as well, and 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 uh, and was an underwriter of loans. I I know what we put through people through to determine if they can qualify to buy a home. So the math was mathing because she wouldn't have got the loan. Period. She ain't renting. Not that it's anything wrong with that. If somebody wants to rent, if that's part of their plan, that's totally fine. But anyway, again, I don't know why I'm going to hit defend the quad because she don't check for me and say she didn't know who I was. But I, I don't like this notion that a woman can't have something unless she's laying on her back, a black woman particularly. That's some BS. She could have made good investments. And let's not forget she was married to a successful psychiatrist. And quiet as is kept, y'all don't get a psychiatrist make minimum $500,000 a year. Y'all be out checking for these OBGYNs and checking for these other people. Psychiatrists make bank, hunty. I should know I'm married to a very successful one. And Greg is a very good uh, psychiatrist. He was probably making some great money and they was living in the South Side with a little $500,000 house living under their means. And so they probably had money together. And so the money Kwai was making for the show, she was probably investing because he that type of man that probably wouldn't ask her to pay no darn bills. So, you know, fall back on that. Now, all this other stuff was she accusing Toy of stealing all that. I don't like that. But on this real estate stuff and on this uh, money management stuff, she might have herself together. And then the other thing is, if she is sleeping with somebody, why is that? Everybody on that panel business, on that show business. I'm just, I mean, we not, I'm not for no sleep with no married man, but everybody says she didn't sleep with no married man. So if the, if she slept with somebody that ain't married and got some benefit from it, some of y'all girls is doing uh, that for nothing. I mean, I'm just, auntie gonna keep it a hundred. <laughs> Get something out of the hell. <laughs> now I'm being messy. No, I'm not. We are not the advice. Get something out of it. Don't be stupid. Be laying up. Don't get nothing here. If you're going to get some, if she got a whole house out of it. <laughs> she didn't sleep with no married man. And I am never for that. But if he wasn't married, so if he was not married and she got some benefit, good for her. Okay. Um. Anyway, that's all I got to say about this topic. I just want to come on real quick because I have not been on YouTube in a minute. Um, y'all send over the comments and let me know what y'all think about this Kim Zosiak Beerman losing her house allegedly. Well, going to it's court records unless they come through with something. And this phenomenon of this Bravo Riche, Nouveau Bravo Riche, you know, all of a sudden you wealthy and you making all this money, and these people not understanding that they need to get people to help them who know how to do this. Because just because you wake up one day and you got a Bravo check doesn't mean you know what to do with that money. You should never be using your real money. You should be using the money you make off your investments from your real money. And like I said before, say what you want about them Kardashians. You will never read a story about them being in debt. That's not going to happen. And it's not because they themselves are savvy business people. It's because their mother is smart enough to hire business managers to manage their funds for them and to tell them when they can buy a new house and if they can get a new Lamborghini, or if they need to do some deal with some company that's going to pay for it for them. Like I, 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 again, going back to Kim, I don't understand why Kim, I don't understand what happened with Cashmere. I know she made a 25 million, but I don't understand with Kim's celebrity, why with her social media, surely she has a few million followers, why she can't monetize her social media and pay her mortgage. Like I'm a nobody one hit one day, as y'all call me, even though I've been on two shows and several business shows, but I, I she's making twelve thousand a post. Like I, I, I don't I, to, to post on social media. I, I don't understand how somebody with millions of followers and the brand recognition that Kim Zosiak Beerman has of loving labels and all that stuff, how she can't make enough to pay her mortgage payment. If Auntie can do a little 30 second or 60 second post and made 12 grand minimum. I, 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 and, 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 and they done took away my Instagram. And so right now I got what half a million followers total betwixt my TikTok and uh, other social media outlets. Oh, by the way, I'm growing back my Instagram. Y'all follow me on MRSMD. Follow me on, let me go find that right now. Um, I need y'all to follow me on MRSMD. 
It's at MRSMD because they took away my 130,000 followers in my verified page. Some haters reported mass reporting on my page because I say what I want to say. And that's fine. So I started a new page and it's only like 1,500 people in there right now. Don't cry for me because I still live in a lovely home in Atlanta and have other homes in happy life. But um, I do like sharing my crop for you ball information with y'all and occasionally shading Bravo people as revenge for what happened to me. But, you know, I, I, I don't understand why Kim can't pay this. I'm lost, but somebody going to come up. So anyway, I appreciate y'all. Um, I will talk to y'all soon. He's crawl before you ball and then take a little bit of the money and say, crawl and then before do something you ball. Because we'll be and money, Jamie, Jane, 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 J